This is my, my big joy that I can participate in your Congress. I thank you so much for invitation. And as a representative of His Holiness Pope Francis to your beautiful country, Ghana, I send his warm greetings and apostolic blessing to each or one of you. I take also this occasion to inform you officially with sadness of the passing away of His Holiness Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. And maybe you know that his last words, what he said was, Jesus, I love you. And I think his last words of late Pope could be also some in stimulation for your meditation and your discussion. My dear priests, as we all know, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI has much given letters of advice on priesthood. One of these is his homily on Holy Thursday of 13 April 2006. He talked of the spirituality of a priest in his call to the mystery of friendship with Jesus. Priesthood is but discovering oneself in the mystery of Jesus Christ, who always the one who gives and draws the priest to himself. In this letter, Pope Emeritus said, in the sacramental gesture of the imposition of hands by the bishop, it was the Lord himself who laid his hands upon us. The sacramental sign sums up an entire existential process. Once like the first disciples, we encountered the Lord and heard his words, follow me. Perhaps to start with, we followed him somewhat hesitantly, looking back and wondering if this really was the road for us. And at some point on the journey, we may have had the same experience as Peter after the miraculous catch. In other words, we may have been frightened by its size, by the size of the task, and by the inadequacy of our own poor selves, so that we wanted to turn back. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Then, however, with great kindness, he took us by the hand, he drew us to himself and said to us, Do not fear, I am with you. I will not abandon you, do not leave me, wrote Pope Benedict. My dear priests, I intentionally remind you of the spirituality as you take a part of your them, the welfare of the diocesan priests in a changing world. There are many factors in the changing world. They may be negative or positive and all these affect the people, the flock that God has called us to shepherd and to journey with. But remember, God has prepared all of us for this. For I know you the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. It is reassuring in the midst of trouble to know that God has a plan for us and that it is a good. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. What God wants us only is to be faithful to his friendship. 
No longer do I call you servants, for the servant doesn't know what, not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. John chapter 15, verse 15. I no longer call you servants, but friends. In these words, one could actually receive the institution of the priesthood. The Lord takes us, his friends. He entrusted everything to us, to entrust himself to us so that we can speak with he himself. What he wants is always to be close to and with him. I will continue this priest's spirituality with the similar advice of His Holiness Pope Francis. In his address to the International Theological Symposium on the Priesthood, Pope Francis talked about priesthood and classness. The Pope describes that these four ways of closeness play an important role in the life of us priests. They are closeness to God, closeness to the bishop, closeness to other priests, and closeness to people. Closeness to God. First, closeness to God, that is, to the Lord of closeness. A priest is called, above all, to cultivate this closeness, this intimacy with God, and from this relationship, he will be able to draw all the strength needed for his ministry. Our relationship with God is so to speak what grafts us to him and makes us fruitful. Without a, a meaningful relationship with the Lord, our ministry will prove fruitless. Closeness to the bishop. The second form of closeness has long been interpreted in a one-sided way. As church all too often, even today, our view of obedience is far from the sense of the gospel. Obedience is not as disciplinary attribute, but the deepest sign of the bonds uniting us in communion. To obey means to learn how to listen, to remember that no one owns God's will, which must be understood only through discernment. Obedience is thus attentive listening to the will of God, which is discerned precisely in a, in a band, our relationship with others. Closeness to the other priests. It is precisely on the basis of communion with the bishop that a third form of closeness emerges, the closeness of fraternity. Jesus is present wherever there are brothers and sisters who love one another. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Matthew chapter 18, verses 20. Fraternity like obedience cannot be a moral imposition from without. Fraternity means choosing deliberately to pursue holiness together with others and not by oneself. As an African proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. Sometimes it seems that the church is slow, and that is true. Yet I like to think of it as the slowness of those who have chosen to walk in fraternity. Closeness to the people. Closeness to people, I have often emphasis, said 
Pope Francis, how our relationship with the holy people of God is for each of us not a duty but a grace. Loving others is a spiritual force driving us to union with God. For this reason, the proper place of every priest is in the midst of people in close relationship to others. In Evangelii Gaudium, Pope stressed that to be evangelizers of souls, we need to develop a spiritual taste for being close to people's lives and to discover that this is itself a source of greater joy. I am convinced, said Pope Francis, for a renewed understanding of the identity of the priesthood. It is important nowadays to be closely involved in people's real lives, to live alongside them without escaped roots. Sometimes we are tempted to be that kind of Christian who keeps the Lord's wounds at arm's length. Yet Jesus wants us to touch human misery to touch the suffering flesh of others. He hopes that we will stop looking for those personal or communal niches which storm of human misfortune and instead enter into the reality of other people's lives and know the power of tenderness. Whenever we do so, our lives become wonderfully complicated and we experience intensely what it is to be a people, to be part of a people, said Pope Francis. My dear, dear priests, for some lighter moments, I would like to share a beautiful sharing of a priest. He said that for those who have a genuine priestly vocation, they would have a list of litany of worthwhile fulfillment and rewards. Of course, not in the absence of pains and trials, but the consolation is that the one who called us priest journey with us in different places and in different faces of people. You will have all these chappy thoughts of a priest when you consider your priesthood a vocation and not as a career. He said that one of those rewards is a deep sense of doing something that is worthwhile, even if the fruits of one's efforts are not always immediately visible. The life of a priest demands sacrifices, but it, it also can be deeply fulfilling. To find a sense of satisfaction and peace in what one does with one's life is a real grace. There are moments for our priestly life when our own lives become transparent to the presence of God working in um, through us. At such times we become aware of the Spirit within our ministry touching others at someone's date bed or in extending a hand to a person who had been alienated from God. There are special moments, little epiphanies, when we became in an exper experiential way a sacrament of God's grace. Another reward of our priestly life is the friendship we discover with other priests, surely this might be an experience by each one of you too, in one way or another. On the matter of Synodal Church, I invite you to reflectively read the letter to all of you priests from Cardinal Mario Gregg, Secretary General of the Synod of Bishops, and Archbishop Lazzaro Johang Sik, Prefect of the Discatory uh, for the Clergy.
as they said, first of all, we are well aware that priests in many parts of the world are already carrying a great pastoral burden. And now it might seem one more thing to do is that it. Rather than inviting you to multiply your activities, we would like to encourage you to look at your communities with the contemplative gaze of which Pope Francis speaks to us in Evangelii Gaudium, number 71. So as to discover the many examples of participation and sharing that are already taking root in your communities. In fact, the current diocesan phase of the synodal process aims to gather the wealth of experiences of lived synodality. We are certain that there are many more of these experiences that what might appear of its glance, perhaps even uniform and spontaneous experiences. All these should be emphasis and experience so as to increasingly develop that synodal style which is the specific modus vivendi et operandi of the church, the people of God. Allow me to con conclude with the prayer of Pope Francis. May Christ visit his priests in their prayer, in their bishop, in their brother's priest, and in their people. Have a blessed and good New Year, Medas.